What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the most comprehensive weekly NFL player review series on the internet, my studs and duds series. Today, we're going to be going over NFL week two, whose stock is rising, whose stock is falling from player's perspective. While we do that, I'm going to be going through this week's update for my own custom Madden roster. Uh, so yes, it's a video game, I realize that, but they are my own ratings, and it's actually a really nice, convenient way to share my perceptions of these players and how my opinion on these guys is changing. So buckle up, we're going to go game by game here. Uh, before we do that, I do ask, please, please take a second, hit that like button down below, and, and perhaps more importantly, share this video with any big NFL fans that you think would enjoy the series, would really appreciate it, would really help. Uh, support my channel and help it grow uh, so like the video share the video all that good stuff let's get into the studs and duds starting with the star of the week and it's going to be a member of my top 10 breakouts player for the 2020 season and it's going to be jamel dean cornerback of the tampa bay buccaneers this dude now playing opposite of tom brady just as we've seen is very similar physically to one of the top corners in the game, Stefan Gilmore, 6'1", 205, physical, smart, fast corner. And those traits are just revealing themselves this year. Uh, he is the leader of this secondary now uh, here in his, uh, man, I always forget. Yeah, he's in his second season. He broke out uh, towards the end of his rookie year. It almost feels like he's his third year, but it's his second year. Uh, yeah, he is just a stud. He can press, man, zone. We've, we've said it all. He's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got the brains. He's got the toughness. He is just a freaking rock star. That was a huge part of that big win against Green Bay with that pick six on Aaron Rodgers. Just the third of his career. Uh, so it's not easy to do. Jumped on an out route uh, against Devontae Adams. Just great coverage all season long. All right. Then we have the dud of the week. Ezekiel Elliott, no surprise here. Most overrated player in a league where Kirk Cousins makes 85 million guaranteed. Ezekiel Elliott, yuck. Oh my goodness, people were bashing Andy Dalton in this game. We gotta throw Zeke under the bus before Andy Dalton. He coughed this game up quite literally with two fumbles in this game. And then beyond that, uh, it couldn't get the run game going at all. Wasn't hitting holes hard. Wasn't contributing in the receiving game. Just a brutal week, and we applauded Zeke after the first game of the season against the Giants because he looked better, he looked more explosive, but that has not been the case since week one. He's looked bad again. The most overrated, overpaid player potentially in the entire National Football League, Ezekiel Elliott, coming down 391 to an 88, might not be enough of a fall. We'll see how he responds this week in a game that the Cowboys need to win against the Washington professional football team. Okay, now we're going to go game by game, and we are going to start with the Patriots-Broncos slugfest. And on the Broncos side of the ball, Garrett Bowles for the fifth week in a row, an emerging superstar tackle. He's been one of the best in the entire league. He's been great in pass protection. He's been great excuse me, as a run blocker as well. He's a former first-round pick in a contract season. He is going to get quite expensive for the Broncos or whoever wants to pay him. Uh, so finally reaching that potential, really great to see. He is he has really been the star of this offensive line that's been pretty good over the last few games. And then we have Tim Patrick. He's doing a really nice job filling into that role as the big-bodied outside Cortland Sutton replacement sucks that they lost Sutton, but it's nice to have Tim Patrick stepping up that big six foot five frame can go up and get it. Uh, has some decent speed out there uh, to, you know, get, get enough separation to contribute as a deep threat. So he's going up for the second week in a row. And then they got rookie tight end Albert Bunam going uh, in the receiving game. He's blocking well. He's got that chemistry with Drew Locke going back to their college days. He looks really good. Uh, Noah Fant out for the season here, so uh, it was a crowded tight end room coming into the year, but they're turning to him now due to injuries, and he's stepping up. He looks like, uh, I don't want to say a, a future star, but he does have the physical traits to uh, get to that point, but he certainly looks good. And then we go over to the defensive side of the ball. It's a really interesting defense. They've really had to adapt and adjust as they've lost a lot of players on that side of the ball. 
Uh, so you're going to look at the defensive line first. Shelby Harris just continues to, frankly, dominate and impress. Uh, kind of a no-name player in this league, but he is just lights out against the run. Um, but he has improved as a pass rush over the last couple years as well. Uh, they lost Jarrell Casey on the interior here, and he has kind of filled that void as the star interior piece uh, for the Broncos. It was such a good move to get him back. The league clearly sleeping on him. I think his contract was like one year, $4 million. I think he's still on that contract year. Hopefully the man can get paid here before he hits that age regression because he's not young. But uh, Shelby Harris, know the name. He's a stud. And then Bradley Chubb, inversely, <laughs> a player that everyone knows about that to this point is – I don't want to say underwhelmed, but certainly hasn't lived up to the the expectations coming out as the top pass rusher in his class. Uh, but he looked like that this week. He looked like it last week. I want to say he's got four sacks over the last two weeks, a bunch of pressures. He looks really dominant, stepping up with Von Miller out. Uh, so both these guys going up, filling in, and, and uh, you know, next man up mentality. Bradley Chubb playing like a number one pass rusher as uh, Von Miller is out, and Shelby Harris stepping up with some of those other interior linemen out. And then Malik Reed as well is filling into that number two spot as Bradley Chubb becomes the number one. Nothing too special here with Reed, but he is a decent kind of low-end rotational third type of guy. He can drop into coverage. He's got some bend around the edge. He's a he's a nifty player, uh, so he's going to go up to a 70. And then Michael Ojemudia, one of the top corners, uh, rookie corners in this class. Uh, this team spent a, th what was it, a third, fourth round pick on him. Definitely a day three pick. Uh, I guess third or fourth round pick would not be a day three pick, Marcus, but you guys get the point. Uh, he looks good. Uh, a great scheme fit. My comp for him coming out of Iowa is actually Prince Mukamara, who's played great in the Vic Fangio defense that runs a lot of uh, quarters, a lot of cover three zone concepts that he's very familiar with coming out of Iowa. And he's been plug and played a great game this week. Uh, so plus one for OJ Mudia. And then Bryce Callahan, he is going to go up to, he is very reminiscent right now of, frankly, Chris Harris <laughs> in this Denver team. Uh, he will play some slot. He is five foot nine, maybe five foot ten, but he is a smaller corner. Uh, but he can also step outside, and he just dunked on Julian Edelman this week. The uh, the the athletic the the athletic mismatch of Bryce Callahan, who's one of the more genuine faster corners in the league. Uh, just Julian Edelman just couldn't get away from him, and it was just really impressive to see. Bryce Callahan was a great signing. He's only played now like five games as a Bronco. He missed all last season for an injury. Uh, but certainly another kind of under-the-radar name on this Broncos defense that's been scrappy good this year. Uh, and then Deshaun Williams, this guy was, I want to say, a second or a third-round pick from the Bengals in like 2015. It was just kind of a bust. He's bounced around the league and never really made a big impact, but uh, he is playing his best football right now for Denver. He got in there for about 30 run defense snaps this week and uh, was tough up front. Uh, so he is going to go up three. And then just a note here on Drew Locke. Uh, it was an interesting game. I, I talked about him on the podcast. Maybe just go check that out. Basically, he's just so raw. I, I'm not really buying into Locke. He's showing some flashes. But, uh, yeah, if you want to hear me talk more about Locke, go check out the Fully Inflated Football podcast from a couple days ago. Okay, so then on the Patriots side of the ball, not quite as much movement. Broncos had a lot of guys moving this week. But uh, the offensive line for the Patriots continues to just be plug and play. They are not missing Dante Scarnecchia on this offensive line right now because it doesn't really seem to matter who they play. They're all playing well. Uh, I, although I will say Isaiah Wynn had a rough week at left tackle this week against Bradley Chubb. But uh, Hjolti Froholt at the left guard steps in. I liked that pick for New England. Uh, so he gets a start or at least comes in for injury. I don't know exactly the circumstances there, but he held his own, plus two, 61 to a 63. I just love saying that name, Hjolti <laughs> Froholt. Justin Heron, plus three, 60 to a 63. He gets his second start in a row at right tackle. Uh, they like him. They drafted him. He's a rookie. Uh, so he's he's been, he's been pretty good. Plus three, 60 to a 63. Cornerback J.C. Jackson uh, was contemplated for star of the week. Uh, this dude has just been lights out this year. He's been one of the top corners in the league. Uh, he's actually been better than Gilmore, opposite of him, athletically gifted. It was a total steal for this Patriots team. I don't know how he was undrafted or a seventh-round pick, whichever it was, basically was free, and he is just outstanding. Certainly due for a contract <laughs> one of these days, and he is going to make the bag. 
the notes for this game, Cam Newton really struggling this, this game. Outside of the Seahawks game, Cam Newton has not looked very good. I'm prepared to lower him. We, we skyrocketed him up after the Seahawks game, but uh, that might have been premature, honestly. We'll, we'll see. Just He doesn't move in the pocket. If he had some movement in the pocket, I think he'd be a lot better. But he just stands there. He's a catapult. Uh, and then we, we kind of talked about Wynn, Edelman, not great games from those guys. They need those players to play well. Uh, and then Jonathan Jones ha has actually struggled this year, but was outstanding in this game. I thought about boosting him up, but uh, needs to play like that, or at least you know well moving forward to go up uh, the other corner there for the Patriots. Okay. Next up, we have the Atlanta Falcons at the Minnesota Vikings. Big upset here for Atlanta. Uh, you know, it's good to see for Atlanta these young guys playing well. Their first-round picks over the last three years, all going up uh, over the last two years, their last three first-round picks. So Kayla McGarry, Chris Lindstrom, the second week in a row going up. For whatever sort of rebuild they're going to have here, whether it's with Matt Ryan or with another quarterback, uh, they have an offensive line in place. I like the left tackle. I like Matt Hennessy, a young center that I think will – develop over time at center and then you got McGarry he's a really good athlete at right tackle who's developing Chris Lindstrom a really good athlete at right guard they spent the 14th overall pick on Chris Lindstrom don't you don't forget that that dude is a freak so he's a really high upside guard uh, so I, I like what they have in that offensive line and then AJ Terrell played really well in this game uh, you know early on uh, doing a good job with Justin Jefferson Adam Thielen now when garbage time hit those guys started to go off, but Terrell certainly popping the first round pick out of Clemson. And then Foya said Aluakun, the linebacker here next to Deion Jones, who had an outstanding game this week. Aluakun uh, had a pick himself, plus 172 to a 73. Just a freak athlete there. Smart guy out of Yale. Uh, a high upside player that's been inconsistent, but if he could reach some of that upside as a smart guy, obviously coming out of Yale with those athletic traits next to Deion Jones, that's another piece to build around with this defense. Uh, and then Dante Fowler, on the other hand, he had a big old contract and seems to be coasting at this stage in his career. He's been nowhere to be found, uh, really struggling this year to get after the quarterback, which uh, going against the Vikings offensive line, you're supposed to be able to do that. Uh, and then just the notes here, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, really good. Uh, they haven't made the most noise this year, but they were really good this week. Uh, could be due for a boost if they uh, contribute to some good offense this week against Detroit. And then for Minnesota, Irv Smith is going to go up second week in a row. They're using him pretty heavily in the passing game, and he is rewarding them. He looks really good. He's a decent blocker, uh, just a good tight end. I, I like him a lot. He's going to go up 175 to a 76. Kirk Cousins was close to a dud of the week. You know, anyone with eyeballs can explain this one. He's just been so bad. They're stuck to him. That contract is terrible. We talked about Zeke's contract being bad. Well, Kirk Cousins is right there with it. He just doesn't elevate the team. When things go wrong, you can't lean on him to get you out of trouble. He doesn't create plays, at least at the level you like. And now the turnovers are stacking up. It's, it's just been bad. He's in his, I think he's on, in his own head now. It's, it's just not pretty. It's not pretty at all. He's not playing, uh, frankly, like a starting caliber quarterback over the last couple weeks. Uh, well, that's not fair. He played well against Seattle, but he's had some real stinkers this year. Uh, and in the second half against Seattle, he melted down as well. So um, quarterback, Harrison Hand, not a, not a huge note here, but he came in, played in the slot. I, I didn't hate him as a versatile kind of rotational defense back, and uh, they've really struggled to find guys that can be stable in that secondary, and he, he held his own this week. So plus five, uh, sorry, plus 165 to a 66. And then Justin Jefferson was outstanding again this week. Not going to go up because he's been skyrocketing. Uh, as far as his rating goes, but again, Justin Jefferson, what a pick he was. Uh, so then we have the Ravens-Eagles game. So for the Ravens, Devin Duvernay is going to go up. He's not seeing a ton of time. They're still using Willie Sneed a lot in the slot, uh, but when he's out there, they're they're peppering him the ball. They're getting him the ball in short, short yardage stuff. They're running jet sweeps with him. You can tell the athletic traits are there. He's been great in the kick return game. Uh, but he's just got steady hands, good route runner in the short game. He's great after the catch, as we know. This was one of my guys in the draft. I had a high second-round grade on him. He was one of my top 50 players with total steal in the third round. Uh, not having the, the rookie breakout necessarily because of playing time, but I think they'd be better off to actually get him more involved. And then we have on the defensive side of the ball, Deshaun Elliott. 
continues to fill in really nicely with Earl Thomas gone there, playing disciplined, uh, coming down, contributing in run defense as well. Uh, just seems to really not be hurting this defense. If anything else, he's actually had a couple games better than what Earl Thomas did last year. So he's he's been solid back there, just from one Texas safety to the next. Uh, and then Pernell McPhee is quietly having a little rejuvenation this year. Uh, he's been outstanding uh, getting after the quarterback as that rotational power rusher here. He's, he's a one-trick pony for sure. He's, you know, more defensive end, or, you know, more 3-4 end than <laughs> edge, but they use him. Uh, lined up at that DN spot over the tackle, just kind of push that pocket. That is what they look for from these pass rushers, and he is doing a really nice job sustaining his career, so he's going to go up. Patrick Queen as well. Almost boosted him, almost did it. Uh, I, I think he'll probably play well again next week, and then he'll go up, uh, but he did go up too last week. So a uh, good game from Patrick Queen, showing off the, those coverage instincts, uh, showing off why they spent a first-round pick on him. Uh, then for the Eagles, Travis Fulgham going to go up for the third week in a row. Super reminiscent of what Alan Lazard did for the Eagles last year, uh, for the for the Packers last year. Uh, ironically, Fulgham was at a time on the Packers. Uh, people were saying that I, I should be more critical of the Packers for letting him go. I, I don't know. He's very redundant with those guys in Green Bay. He's not a great separator. He doesn't have a lot of speed. I don't see him as a very high upside player, but the way I've described him is he is giving the Eagles what they wanted when they took J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, which is which is nice. You know, if you bust on a pick in Ortega-Whiteside, at least you can find Travis Fulgham to be that player. Just super good hands. He, he's also been the Alshon Jeffrey here <laughs> that they haven't had. He's been a reliable target for Carson Wentz. He's been helping this offense. He's been helping Wentz play with more confidence. So and nice to have a guy that you can trust out there. I just don't love the upside as far as being a great separator, but a really physical, tough player and a nice guy to have on your football team to be sure. And then Jordan Mailata, this guy's interesting. Uh, this guy is a seventh round pick for the Eagles. was just a total flyer on a freak athlete that's never played football in his life. And he has been a more than serviceable left tackle. They've been just depleted by injuries. They didn't want to have to lean on Jordan Mailata, who, again, has never played football until this year. Uh, but he is looking the part and uh, is holding his own. He's been a good run blocker as well. He's going to get had. He's just incredibly raw. Uh, but that size and speed and uh, not, not necessarily speed, but, you know, the, just the athleticism and strength more so. It, it can be a, a good baseline for anyone in the NFL at, at tackle. And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, I guess I should mention that Jack Driscoll, uh, I don't know if he started or came in for injury in this game, I can't remember, but uh, he held his own. He's been not the best this year. Driscoll is one of my guys in the draft, but he certainly had his best game as a tackle. Uh, so with Maialata and Driscoll, uh, hopefully they can get uh, Lane, Lane Johnson back at right tackle here soon, but uh, Driscoll, Maialata playing all right as, as fill-in tackles this year. Uh, and then the defense, Alex Singleton, is getting a ton of reps at linebacker. He had a good game this week. Uh, the Eagles actually did a good job against the run here outside of the, the one breakaway from Lamar. But uh, Singleton's been contributing. Sean Bradley gets out there uh, with Duke Riley out this, this week. Bradley was a really raw athlete coming out of Temple, but he did do one thing well at Temple, and that was tackle and fly to the ball and uh, he showed that this week against this run-heavy Ravens team. Uh, he's got a lot to prove, a lot to show uh, as far as coverage and all that stuff. But a trade team player who's an interesting piece for this defense, that's a, a position of weakness there at linebacker. But Singleton, Bradley, uh, they had their best performance at linebacker that they've had this season. Uh, and then Javon Hargrave on the interior defensive line has been really disappointing. He, he was supposed to be this this really sound run defender here. He hasn't been, and he was supposed to be a guy that can contribute as a pass rusher as well. He's been okay as a pass rusher, uh, but I, I think what, what they really wanted to get from him was that toughness on the interior, uh, set the tone a little bit on earlier downs, and he's just he's not doing it right now. So uh, paying him a lot of money to not necessarily do what they wanted. He hasn't been terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, coming down from what was a great year for Hargrave last year. All right, now we have the Bears-Panthers. For the Chicago Bears, Cole Komet on the offensive side of the ball is going to go up and a nice touchdown this week. Uh, you know, I, I think he's 
Kyle Rudolph. He's got good hands. He's big body. Looks the part, but he's not a great athlete. He's not the best blocker. I think he was overdrafted, but doesn't mean he can't be a player in the NFL. Then we have David Montgomery, plus one, 78 to a 79 for the second week in a row. They're really leaning on him uh, to basically carry this offense right now. Uh, and he's he's doing all right at it. He's breaking tackles. He's taking care of the football. He's contributing in the receiving game. So uh, he is certainly having a better year this year. He's going to go up. Now, Anthony Miller, on the other hand, has really not done much here. They are trying to get him the ball, uh, but it's mostly all short completions. I think he had three targets this week for like eight yards. It just, you know, not becoming a downfield factor here. It clearly is something missing here with Anthony Miller, who's had a roller coaster career. He's been up and down, up and down. Uh, maybe it's just scheme fit. I don't know. I like Anthony Miller. Just doesn't seem to be the best fit here in Chicago. And a lot of that is quarterback play, but uh, you can't completely forgive uh, or excuse Anthony Miller. Then we have Roquan Smith, the linebacker. His best game is a bear this week. He was flying all over the field. He was contributing in coverage. Uh, he is a young player. If he's getting up to speed now in year three, that's going to be scary for this defense. Uh, and he certainly looked like it this week. He was eating against an offense that can be a little bit more predictable with this short passing game. Uh, so certainly a game that Roquan uh, would have a lot of opportunities to show that sideline to sideline speed because that is the Panthers game is short to intermediate passing. Uh, but he certainly lived up to the test and looked good. And then just the last guy here, James Vodders. Uh, kind of similar to what we said about Malik Reed for Denver, just that rotational third edge player that does a lot against the run, not contributing as a pass rusher at all, but uh, he's an interesting athlete to drop into coverage out of that edge spot as well. He's a good athlete uh, with some decent movement skills, so he's a good fit here to basically do what Robert Quinn can't on early downs. Robert Quinn is a miserable run defender. He's not a guy you want to drop into coverage. You want him fresh to fly off the edge. Quinn did have a good game this week. Uh, so uh, Vodders is the perfect complement to Robert Quinn. So good to uh, kind of develop him. He's been sitting around here for a long time. Then for the Carolina Panthers, uh, it's going to be all defense going up here. Uh, the offense was just kind of lackluster this week. Uh, DJ Moore, he had a decent game. But he could have had a much better game. He's got a ton of drops. I think he has five or six drops this year. He wasn't come down with contested catches either. Uh, so while he had a decent game, and he had a good game last week as well, at least a, a big explosive play, uh, he just has left a lot of meat on the bones this year. Now, those drops, I think, will come back around the other way, and he'll turn it around. But I thought him and Teddy would have a much better rapport and production so he's on my list of of concerns for this season but i think he'll be okay uh, but for the defense that has been surprisingly good this year rasul douglas was a good pickup he's uh he's a tough veteran uh, that's making a case to be a starter here i don't, I don't think he's a long-term answer but he's, he's actually been really solid there uh, at that outside corner spot which is an obvious position of need for this Panthers team, was coming in. So that was a good find. Jeremy Chin, second-round pick here, had his best game as a Panther in coverage. Uh, he actually has 10 missed tackles on the year, but I think part of that is he is just so aggressive. He flies to the ball. I do think he needs to take better angles, uh, break down a little better. Uh, he is a, a work in progress, but it's been a fun work in progress. I think he's going to be a really good player. He's just such a freak athlete. He just flies around and has fun playing football. So uh, he's going up for the second week in a row. And then Brian Burns, this is this is what the Panthers needed to see, right? They drafted all defense, and they took Brian Burns in the first round last year. They they wanted to see this defense uh, kind of come into their own. They knew they weren't going to be a playoff team this year necessarily, but get some of these high investment guys to look like future stars. And that's, that's what they're getting here with Chin and Burns. Burns has been one of the top pass rushers in the NFL this year. Uh, I didn't hate Brian Burns coming out, but I certainly wasn't crazy about him. I, I thought he was drafted to right the, uh, around the right spot there at 15, uh, and I thought he needed some time, and frankly, he, he wasn't particularly good as a rookie, uh, but he is really polishing his game, which you wanted to see. You, know, you can't always win with just burst and speed around the edge, uh, so he is you know, refining that tool belt, as we like to say. Uh, so I'm impressed by what we're seeing from Brian Burns. He is a crazy upside pass rusher uh, who is kicking some ass this year for the Panthers. Then our next game here is going to be an entertaining Bengals-Colts game. 
So for the Bengals, Jonah Williams and Trey Hopkins, this offensive line is certainly faulty, but it hasn't been Trey Hopkins and Jonah Williams' fault. Hopkins kind of emerged as a breakout center last year. Not breakout, but serviceable. I don't know if he's the long-term answer or whatever, but he's been fine. And then Jonah Williams at left tackle in his, effectively, his rookie season looks the part. I loved that pick when they made it. He certainly is playing like a franchise left tackle this year. It's just is the rest of the guys that are just so bad that these guys can go overlooked. And then for the receivers, AJ Green actually had a decent game. I, I didn't boost him because he's been so bad this week. And there's still some moments where I wasn't all that impressed, but they got him more involved and he produced this week. So he could be going back up, but I still, I don't see the burst and I, I don't really see the physicality there. So I'm not all the way in on AJ Green, despite the production being there this week. But T. Higgins does look really good. He looks explosive. He was really criticized for his athleticism, and I, I never understood that. I don't. I, who was the guy? Oh, it was uh, on the Colts here, Michael Pittman. People shot Michael Pittman up over T. Higgins because they thought he was a better athlete, and I never understood that. T. Higgins was a much better separator. I never thought that he should have been uh, considered a better prospect. The Bengals agreed. And I think Pittman was like the next pick or two picks later. Uh, but yeah, that's that's an interesting you know reflection on the draft. T. Higgins looks the part. I, I think that they're very comfortable with T. Higgins overtaking A.J. Green as that traditional outside threat. Very similar player to Mike Williams coming out of Clemson. Uh, and then on the defensive side of the ball for the Bengals, Jesse Bates, probably the top free safety in football this season. He's been outstanding. Uh, he had a, a pick late in this game. Was just a just a ball hawk badass play from him uh, flew in wasn't really Rivers fault I mean Bates is just that good he leaped up spectacular catch was just you know awesome to see he's been making plays like that all season and I, I gotta go back and look I can't remember if he was on my breakout list or not but I have always been a big Jesse Bates guy it's good to see him uh, reaching that potential as a star safety in this league and start to get some of that uh, interception recognition that you, you need to see from these top safeties. Uh, it's always a big thing for the, the casual fans to see those interception numbers from the safeties. Uh, and then Akeem Davis gather quite a remarkable stat on this guy. Uh, not last week, but two of the last three weeks. So you go back three weeks ago, you go look at this game. He literally does not play on rundowns. Uh, I think it was like 18 snaps three weeks ago and like 25 snaps this week. So that's almost, you know, almost a full start's worth of snaps in those two games. And not a single one of them, he had to defend the run, which that's how you use Akeem Davis together. He, he's one of these safety slot corner outside linebacker hybrid types. Never going to be a great run defender. They've got other bigger bodied linebackers, but I love what they're doing with together. They're bringing him in on obvious passing downs and he's covering well. So I like what I'm seeing there. Uh, inversely, Von Bell, who's actually a kind of similar athlete as this oversized safety, is not covering well. Uh, you know, he, he was a decent signing, um, but has never been a good cover player. So he's going to come down. Teams have been able to, to get him in the passing game for sure. Uh, then we have the Indianapolis Colts. This offensive line has been a little bit underwhelming. Anthony Costanzo, Braden Smith, the two tackles going down here. It's been... Not a huge concern. They haven't been like miserable, but this was regarded as one of the top tackle duos coming into the season, and they have played far from that. So it's time for them to both come down. Trey Burton, the Colts and tight ends, and Phillip Rivers, like it seems almost plug and play at this point. Jack Doyle had a good game this week as well. Uh, Trey Burton, uh, more of that athletic mismatch, very similar to what they did with Eric Ebron. Uh, so, the, you know, Frank Reich just loves using these tight ends. He's familiar with Trey Burton, who had his best days in Philadelphia. Uh, so they seem to have found something for cheap there in Trey Burton. And then uh, Philip Rivers was outstanding in this game. Now, he's been pretty concerning over the course of the season. Uh, so I, I didn't raise him this week, but if, if this is the Philip Rivers we see, he's going to go up very quickly. Uh, he, he played like good old Philip this, this week. A really outstanding game and probably the best quarter of his career in the second quarter. Uh, so then on to the defense side of the ball, Julian Blackman. We've talked a lot about Blackman uh, replacing Malik Hooker, and he is outplaying Malik Hooker here. Uh, Blackman had an outstanding pick to seal this game as well, coming down from that high third uh, cover three that the Colts love to run here. That's basically exclusively what Julian Blackman 
thrived at at Utah, so he's very comfortable running that high third free safety. And man, he is he is a baller. He shows the speed. He shows the ball skills. Uh, tackler, great find in the third round for the Colts. And then these corners, it's been good for Xavier Rhodes. A great scheme fit. I've always been curious to see him play in one of these more cover three press heavy schemes a lot of zone coverage not playing as much match and uh, man coverage as he was asked to do in Minnesota where he had some of those really bad games Uh, so the Colts are protecting his weaknesses really well it's uh, maximizing on his strengths as that lengthy corner Uh, so he's looking good this year but inversely Rocky Sin is struggling I I was not a big Rocky Sin guy Uh, I was honestly a little surprised the Colts were so high on him. He just doesn't seem to have the athletic traits that you want to gamble on at the corner position. Now, I'm not going to write him off or anything, uh, but he is, he's had an up and down start to his career. He was not good in this game. Uh, so he's going to go down. He's got some work to do, to say the least. Justin Houston's going to come down. He looks like he is reaching the end here. Uh, it just hasn't been much of an impact for this pass rush that I would say has probably been an underwhelming this year. They brought in Buckner and hoping this de- this pass rush would take a step up. That's a big part of the Seattle three defense is getting pressure with your front four, and it's just not really happening. Uh, and Justin Houston has been a part of that. Grover Stewart has been really good as a run defender, though. He's been around here. Uh, your, 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 cl- your classic uh, Dave Gettleman nose tackle here where, you know, cheap investment. You never got to pay the guy too much, but you know he's going to be reliable on early downs, uh, eating blocks and getting pushed in the run game. All right, then we have the browns Stullers game. Baker Mayfield, was time to go down. I didn't make him the dud of the week, and I thought about lowering him three here because he really has been that bad, but he was injured this week, so I'll give him a chance to get healthy and uh, bounce back. But, man, the decision-making has been poor, forcing balls over the middle of the field. The accuracy has not been there. The pocket movement has been on and off. Uh, So he is really becoming a question mark for the Browns. I'm just going to say that. He's got to play better. He has to play a lot better. And then the two linebackers are going to go up. Sion Takitaki, Malcolm Smith. Smith has been a great find here. He's having a, a, a rebirth here in Cleveland, covering well. He's been the leader of that defense, calling things out. Uh, you can hear a lot without the crowd noise there. And I just I noticed him like clearly call out a screen mid-play. A uh, very vocal player, it sounds like. There are some other plays where you could hear him. Uh, so I like what he's bringing to that defense at a linebacker position that's been a major weakness for the Browns. And then for the Steelers, uh, James Conner's going to go up. I called out the Steelers that they needed a running back to step up. Conner was, you know, not much against the Giants in week one, but he's been much better since. Uh, he's been just steady, fights for tough yards. He's, st- he's still not the explosive guy, but uh, I-, I love James Conner. Just the story is so great coming back from cancer he's a local guy here in Pittsburgh he's tough I, I would love to see him and Pittsburgh come to some kind of a contract agreement I, I don't think he's a kind of running back that certain like deserves a lot of money I, I mean he does he's a great guy I hope he gets 20 billion dollars but to be honest like he's probably a three or a four million dollar running back he's you know kind of one of these replaceable power backs to be blunt um, but I would love to see him be a Pittsburgh Steeler for a long time. I think he's a great fit here. I don't know if he's going to try to test the market and see what he can get, but I, I would love to see him be kind of a one-two punch to, say, a uh, McFarland, who they drafted, who's more of a speedster, and kind of have that more RBBC running back by committee approach here. Then we have Chase Claypool going up. I mean, you can turn on any podcast out there uh, to hear about Chase Claypool. He's been just you know, unbelievable with that size speed profile showing up early as a rookie. And then the offensive lineman here, Chukuma Akorafor, he's been a long-term developmental option for the Steelers and he's showing what the Steelers do here. They teach you how to play offensive linemen. Kevin Dotson, really interesting pick here, was a fourth round pick. He has been lights out as a pass protector. And I mean, lights out, my goodness. Um, I I still want to see them get obviously DeCastro back who's a star right guard kick Dotson over to left guard and put Matt Filer back to right tackle where he's been great and then you're going to have one of these elite Pittsburgh offensive lines again no offense to Chukuma Akwarafor but Filer's been outstanding at right tackle 
And another interesting note here is Kevin Dotson played next to Robert Hunt, uh, who was a second round pick for Miami. And Dotson has severely outplayed Robert Hunt. Uh, Hunt's been fine. He's been playing tackle. Um, but Dotson looks like he maybe should have been the guy that got the recognition there out of UL Lafayette. Uh, and then on the defensive side of the ball, Stephon Tuitt has had a breakout season frankly I mean he he was on track to do this last year too that's what you love to see about this with to it uh, he's a high paid defensive tackle but I don't think a lot of people necessarily know about Stefan to it uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys do but the the more casual NFL fans probably don't know who Stefan to it is but they should I mean he is he's one of these premier interior pass rushers he's a great run defender uh, and man he's just a part of this front seven that is just unblockable right now Tyson Alualu is having his best season by far. He has basically <laughs> gotten the development that you would have hoped Jacksonville could have given the top 10 pick from feels like a decade ago. Uh, you know, Alu Alu is a really tough player with some physical traits and, and Pittsburgh's getting the most out of him in run defense and he's been dominating in, against the run. He's been one of the best run defenders in the league this year. Uh, so Alu Alu to it. Hayward was great in this game as well. And then uh, Robert Spillane had to step up. Unfortunate Devin Bush injury, but he did okay. Someone to monitor to see if he can play uh, at least at a starting caliber level to fill that big injury there would really be a nice boost uh, for the Steelers' defense uh, to sustain that injury. Then we have the Lions-Jaguars game. Uh, the, ja the Lions offense played really well in this game and you could certainly see some boosts coming for some of these guys. Like TJ Hawkinson was great in this game. Stafford, the offensive line. Uh, there's a lot of potential here on this Detroit offense. They just need to show it more consistently. Uh, but good to get DeAndre Swift going. Was, in my opinion, the best running back in this class. And he looked the part this week. Uh, what's interesting about Swift is, is he hasn't necessarily been the type of player that I thought he would be. He reminded me so much of Kareem Hunt at Georgia. Uh, being more of that contact balance guy. You know, making guys miss. Being that fluid receiver out of the backfield. He's been more of a full speed ahead, uh, like speed train type of runner this year. Just the tape, his his football, his NFL tape doesn't match his college tape. He was more of a finesse player at Georgia, and he's kind of playing as more of a um, physical straight line player this year. Just an interesting note there, but it is good to see that speed. I mean, he had a run this week where you could tell the burst is there. Uh, inversely, Carrion Johnson really struggling. It could just be the injuries have stacked up. He's really been banged out throughout his career, going back through college. Uh, he's just not having a good year at all. He's pass blocking really well, which is interesting. But yeah, he's just not creating yards. Uh, and he's this team's third running back, I mean, behind Adrian Peterson. So he, he certainly is not having a good season. Shown kind of why they took DeAndre Swift, I think. Uh, the, 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 the wheels are maybe falling off of Carrion a little bit. And then you have Marvin Jones going to go down as well. Talk about wheels falling off. He's approaching 31 years old. He just hasn't been that same deep threat. He looks like he's a little washed. We said that at a point last year, though, and he turned it around. So we'll see if this Lions offense really starts to click. Uh, he could certainly go back up. That's kind of what he did last year, like I said. Uh, they play Atlanta this week. So you never know. Maybe he goes off for three touchdowns. That's kind of what he does. He just kind of keeps rejuvenating here. But we'll see. Then on the defensive side of the ball, Deron Harmon's been a great signing. He's brought more of that traditional free safety here. I, I get a laugh looking back at some of the Lions fans that thought Deron Harmon was going to play strong safety and that Tracy Walker was going to be free safety. I, I just got a laugh out of that because, like, uh, I, have you ever watched Deron Harmon play? Like, he's a terrible run defender. He does nothing for you when you bring him down to the box. And I, I think for all of Patricia's flaws, he knows – Duran Harmon very well as a player. Uh, so Duran Harmon's been the free safety here, but he's been really good at it. And this is the first time he's gotten that full-time starter opportunity. He's just been buried behind Devin McCourty his whole career. Uh, so he looks really good. He could even go up. Like he, this could be a late career surgence because it's not a resurgence, surge, a late career surge for Duran Harmon. Uh, just patrolling that middle of the field, a really nice pick in this game. Just looks good, looks the part. Uh, John Penasini gonna go up, uh, kind of a. Your, uh, your your typical Dave Gettleman player here, <laughs> or your Dave Gettleman award winner. Good run defender, a late round pick, plug and play, defensive tackle against the run. And then Amani Arwarie, uh, I'll shout out a, a brief conversation I had with 
Lions with a Z. A lot of you guys around this channel are familiar with Alex, great patron. So I'll shout him out. We had a good good discussion on Discord. Uh, he was talking about how uh, True Font was out and he was a little concerned about how the, the Lions defense was going to play. And I, I noted that I, I'm not sure that Amani Arawarie is not worse. Yeah, Amani or Amani Oruwarie can play. I loved him coming out of Penn State. I thought this was a total steal. Uh, I don't know if he'll keep this job if and when Trufant gets healthy, but I, I think maybe he should. He's got all of the traits. He's young, uh, and but not that young. He's a redshirt senior coming out. Like, he's ready to play. Never should have been a fifth-round pick. I never understood that. Uh, so him and Akuda, I think, have a lot of potential to be a legitimate cornerback duo with some upside. So I like that a lot. And then for the Jags, not a whole lot of excitement here. Their season's kind of crumbling after an exciting start. Uh, some low-level defenders here. Adam Gotsis really made sense that they signed him after they traded away Calais Campbell. He's the same player, just not of the same pedigree. That six foot eight freaky defensive end, uh, early down run defender. I mean, they, they have a type uh, for that defensive end spot. And Adam Gotsis has been fine. Doug Costin, uh, an undrafted guy out of Miami of Ohio, is playing good run defense here. And then Gerard Wilson's been a bright spot for this defense. He's a player, uh, someone that I think should get a contract extension and showed last week that he can be versatile. He can play some free safety, some strong safety. Uh, so he is a player. And then the notes on this one, Keelan Cole almost went up here, almost went up, uh, but he's having a great season. He's been climbing. Another good week, he'll go up. And then C.J. Henderson has been really solid. Uh, again, for him, if, if he has a good week next week, he could go up against that Chargers. Uh, good group of receivers is going to be put to the test this week. All right, game number eight here, Houston at Tennessee. Laramie Tunsil, we talked about him last week. More of the same, continues to dominate. Uh, just took Jadavion Clowney out of this game. So he's having an excellent season. Uh, and then the tight ends here, the, the Texans have never really had a good tight end game with Deshaun Watson there, but Darren Fells and Watson have a great chemistry together. Uh, Fells has been that guy for Watson when the play breaks down. He's always kind of there. He's six foot seven. Watson is, does a great job of uh, kind of the, the two-man game there where they'll, they'll find a hole in the zone uh, or he'll just put a good ball on Fells in man coverage. Uh, and he's been nice. And then Farrell Brown, an interesting pickup here. Uh, who is uh, has now had two back-to-back -back games as as uh, tight end two here, uh, doing a little bit of everything, blocking well, contributing in the receiving game. Uh, so the tight ends getting a boost here, and then on the defensive side of the hall, PJ uh, <laughs> defensive side of the hall, PJ Hall here. He's going to go up too. He's been an excellent pickup for the Texans. I, I never really understood why the Raiders let him go. They uh, you know, claim it was injury. He didn't even pass his physical when the Vikings tried to trade for him. Uh, man, do the Vikings wish that they didn't fail his physical because he looks like a guy that could start for the Vikings right now who have the worst interior defensive line in football. Uh, but P.J. Hall, explosive athlete with that nose tackle frame. Uh, so he he's a high upside player at, at worst as a a high-end run defender, which he's showing here in Houston, but he even has some traits to be a pocket pusher as um, that nose tackle. So I, I like P.J. Hall. Uh, they have a young group of interior guys there. Uh, Ross Blacklock's been getting on the field, moving around a little bit. Uh, so then we have Tyrell Adams. He's stepping up at linebacker with Benardrick McKinney out. He's been a really sound player there. Uh, they haven't really missed a beat. Uh, he's He's been part of this defense playing better. Um, I know Derrick Henry ripped off like 250 yards, but that's not all Tyrell Adams' fault. And then Bradley Roby, plus one, 76 to a 77. He's been really nice this year. Uh, he's a good scheme fit, man-heavy scheme. He's doing a good job here, so he's going to go up plus one. And then for the Titans, Ryan Tannehill, second week in a row, he's going to go up. He has been outstanding now. Uh, he was probably a good second half in this game away from being a star of the week. Still showed some flaws. Uh, I mean, if, if it weren't for Derrick Henry and his big plays, uh, Ryan Tannehill it probably lose this game. He threw a bad pick in the second half, lost a strip sack. He, he has not been perfect, but I don't want to be overly critical of Tannehill, and Titans fans are just so upset at me. I, like, I'll admit it. Ryan Tannehill's playing great. He's, to me, a borderline top 10 quarterback. If he can continue this, this track, he'll, he'll be there before long, I'm sure of it. 
Um, so he's going to go up. He's going to get his respect. Derrick Henry, time to boost him up. Uh, this was his best game of the year. Uh, he's just such a such a freak. When when he gets going, you just you can't tackle the guy. He's got his flaws. He, he doesn't have a lot of burst in the short game. And he's not a good receiver at all. He's a one-trick pony, but that one trick is very unique and very powerful in every sense of the word. Anthony Ferkser had another good game this week. He's an interesting athletic tight end here. Uh, they get him involved. Uh, they sneak him behind the defense all the time on play action. He, he seems to be making a play every week. He's a really good run blocker as well. And then on the offensive line, uh, Ty Sembrello is going to have to step up like he did in this game with Taylor Lewan out. He's a really good run blocker. I worry about how he's going to fare as a pass protector. Uh, so we'll see how that projects as the season goes on. And then Roger Saffold uh, showing his age a little bit. This was almost a minus two. I think he'll he'll be fine, um, but he, he just has not been a good pass protector this year at all. And then Adam Humphreys as well has been great in the slot. Uh, might be due for a boost. Didn't get one this week, but certainly could be going up in the near future. And then for the defense, uh, I do have a note on Jadavion Clowney. We talked about him getting pretty much locked out by uh, Laramie Tunsil. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, he's been fine in run defense. He's done his thing, but continues to be kind of that overrated, just a number two pass rusher, uh, you know, doing his Jadavion Clowney things. Uh, he had a good opportunity for a revenge game here, and he didn't do it. Then we have Rashawn Evans, plus one, 77 to 78. His ability to come up and thump is unique. Uh, he might be the best run defending middle linebacker in the game at the moment. Uh, he had a stop on David Johnson that just rang throughout the stadium. Like Without the crowd noise, we talked about how you can hear more. Yeah, he came up and just slammed into David Johnson, who's like 225 pounds. Uh, and just stuffed him at the goal line. Really impressive stuff. But his, his tackling grades on the season have been off the charts. He's still not a great cover player. Uh, but man, man, is he a physical force on the inside. It's going to be fun to see him thump against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. So next up, we have the gross Washington football team New York Giants game. Cam Sims caught a nice touchdown in this game. Big bodied receiver, uh, low level depth chart guy. He's going to go up one. Antonio Gibson's been solid. Hasn't had a lot of running lanes behind this offensive line, but he's been good in the receiving game. Uh, so he's looking like a, a future starter for them at, at the running back spot with some explosiveness. Good three down option if they could ever surround him with some talent. And then on the defense, Montez Sweat continues to really develop nicely here. Uh, this just made sense, uh, making him a number two now, opposite of Chase Young with the good coaching of Ron Rivera. Uh, making a better scheme fit here in the 4-3. Just all made sense. He has been so nasty as a run defender. Um, but he's shown some of that confidence and explosiveness as a pass rusher where he's been okay. Uh, so Sweat and Chase Young have been great uh, as a duo. And then Kendall Fuller, plus two, 81 to an 83. What an outstanding signing. Uh, he has been a total natural here. Reminds me a lot of what Josh Norman did in this scheme. A lot of zone concepts where Fuller is really comfortable. He can man guys up as well. He's a very similar player to his brother. And it's good to see him get those opportunities on the outside, reminiscent as well of a guy like Casey Hayward, who's a similar player. He's not a you know, big corner, but he's instinctive and quick and understands the game really well and has great ball skills. Uh, so it could be very similar to Casey Hayward, where he is now on a, a steal of a contract, playing like one of the top corners at like 10 million a year. So uh, the defense has a lot of promise. They just have so many other things to figure out. And then for the Giants, uh, some guys to talk about on this offensive line that I think is in for a long night, by the way. Uh, I think uh, by the time you see this, they'll have already been in for a long night against the Eagles. Uh, I'm, I'm hitting the road out to L.A. this weekend, actually. But, uh, yeah, Will Hernandez has not been great uh, just all season. It was time for him to come down. I am excited to see Matt Pert go up against Brandon Graham. So we'll know when this video comes out how this goes. Uh, if he plays well in that matchup, which, I mean, that's completely skipping over the fact that Matt Pert got in the game <laughs> this week against Washington. I, I want to say that they benched Fleming, finally, who's been so bad at right tackle. I loved this Matt Pert pick. I had a freaking first-round grade on the dude, and I thought it was a total steal. And he looked the part coming in here. So I'm, I'm super excited for Pert. 
I think between him and Andrew Thomas, the Giants could really have something there at tackle. So it's the, one of the players that I'm most excited to see this week is Matt Pert. Hopefully get the start at right tackle. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, Caden Smith, backup tight end, is blocking well. Reliable hands. I liked him coming out, so he's, he's a decent player. He stepped up well last year when Ingram went down. Uh, and then Julian Love is going to come down. It hurts me to say it, but I, I just i am not impressed by what he's doing at free safety. Julian Love, very similar actually to Kendall Fuller. Can play some slot, could play outside. Yeah, he could play free safety, but it probably would not be the position of choice there. He was a corner at Notre Dame. That's why I liked him. Certainly has the ball skills and instincts to develop as a free safety, but I just don't love it. Uh, it's not like the other corners here outside of James Bradbury have been just lights out. DeAndre Baker's not in your way anymore. So I would love to see Julian Love maybe make a transition back to corner. I'm just not super impressed by what we're seeing from him at free safety. And you have McKinney there. You have Jabril Peppers. We'll, we'll see what they end up doing with him long term. Uh, then we have the Jets-Dolphins game. So for the Jets, there is actually some movement here. Uh, you got to look real hard to find some positives, but they're in there. So the right side of the offensive line, we talked about them playing better. And George Fant actually played left tackle this week with Mekhi Becton still injured. But Greg Van Roten looking like a decent signing there. And then George Fant also looking like a decent signing. Uh, also interesting was uh, the, the center they brought in from Denver. He actually played a lot of right tackle this week and was okay. So th those free agent signings are actually playing all right. Joe Flacco is just so bad. Uh, now, the Dolphins' defensive line isn't the best, uh, but that's at least a positive for the Jets. I mean, for as big of a train wreck as they've been, I mean, Flacco's so bad. So if you get Darnold in there, if the offensive line's better, and then maybe they can get Denzel Mims in there, with Crowder and Herndon, like they could maybe turn this thing around like they did last year and be a serviceable team down the stretch. I would hope they still fire Adam Gase. Uh, so I don't know. I'm not going to predict that to happen, but there's something in there that needs to be untapped. And then you have on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Marcus May had a great game. He almost went up. Quinn and Williams had a great game, one of his better games. Uh, a guy that's rated nicely that has been on and off, but uh, he's a super high upside player. Another reason why you could have some optimism for the Jets there. Uh, free safety, getting some coverage, and then pass rusher in Quinn Williams. And then Brian Poole has been lights out in the slot as well, so your short to intermediate coverage player has been great. And Bryce Huff. Woo! What a call on that one. Bryce Huff was an undrafted player. Comes in, gets a sack. He looks like a guy that can at least be a rotational power rusher. Uh, a guy that I thought Baltimore should have spent like a third or a fourth round pick on because he's just fit for that push the pocket power rushing style. He's explosive. He's got his flaws. He's not a great tackler. His arms are a little short. I believe that might be why he fell. Uh, but I love me some Bryce Huff. Great to see him getting out there, making an impact for a pass rush that's been so bad this year. And then... <laughs> Uh, on the on the Dolphins side of the ball here, Adam Shaheen continues to be an impact. This looks like a good acquisition from the Dolphins. Just needed to be freed from the Bears, it seems. Uh, they obviously have Mike Kosicki, but Adam Shaheen is actually their starting tight end, if you ask me. Kosicki is more of a slot receiver. Uh, so Shaheen is getting out there a lot. He's uh, pass blocking really well. He's run blocking well. He came down with uh, some good catches in this game. He was a second-round pick not long ago, so he's got some upside. So between Shaheen, Kosicki... Parker and Preston Williams and, and Grant, they've got some playmakers here. Uh, now, Eric Flowers playing really well on that offensive line. I think the Miami offensive line conversation is an interesting one. I've now heard two different podcasts this week say that these rookie linemen are all starting and playing well. Well, Austin Jackson has been out for most of the season, so we don't really know on that one. And when he was in there, he didn't look great. He was a raw prospect coming in. Robert Hunt, honestly, has not been good at right tackle. He's given up, like, I think it's seven pressures in the last two weeks. And, again, you're playing the Jets edge players. And last week against the, 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 the Niners without any of their guys. So I'm concerned about Robert Hunt at right tackle. I don't think he has the foot speed to be a high-end uh, right tackle. And then Solomon Kinley hasn't been that great at right guard either. So those are kind of the guys that you hoped would be really good. Eric Flowers looking like a good signing. The, the guy they got at center from New England's been good. Uh, but they've been back to starting Jesse Davis at left tackle. He hasn't been good. 
Uh, the O-line conversation is going to be an interesting over the next few weeks. It's obviously better than what they had last year, but that's not saying much. Uh, so I wanted to point that out uh, and remind people that I did not like the uh, draft class of the Dolphins as far as what they did on the offensive line. I think they left a lot of meat on the bones for the picks that they had. Uh, example would be a guy in Matt Pert, who they did not take to be a better right tackle than Robert Hunt. We'll see that all play out. For the defense of the Dolphins, it was a huge week for them, but that tends to happen when you play the Jets. But Xavier Howard, outstanding performance. He's been so good since coming back healthy here. Uh, he is a highly paid corner, and he is playing up to it. Him and Byron Jones, super high upside corner duo. Uh, Noah Igbenogany, their first-round pick, got in there and played well this week as well. Uh, super high upside secondary there, especially when Bobby McCain plays well. And then you have Eric Rowe, Brandon Jones, two very similar strong safeties. Uh, Brandon Jones, a pick that I didn't love, but he, he's looking like he was at Texas, which is that box safety who isn't the best cover player, but is a super secure tackler. I understand why, uh, uh, oh, geez, name's escaping me, Bob, Rob Flores, Brian Flores. I understand why he liked him as that Belichick coach. They value tackling above pretty much anything else in the secondary, uh, or at least from a lot of their defenders. Obviously, they want cover players, but Brandon Jones, a great tackler. Uh, he's getting in the rotation here. Uh, so uh, uh, Emmanuel Ogba also had a crazy good game uh, against the right side of that Jets offensive line. Uh, not going to boost him quite yet. He's had a quiet season, but uh, could be going up if he plays like that. Absolutely. And then Raquan Davis as well. I mean, both these guys are that kind of oversized edge, undersized interior guy. Raquan Davis, an interesting prospect coming out of Alabama. All the physical traits in the world had a good game this week. Excited to see how they continue to use him uh, in a scheme that fits his skill set really well. Uh, then we have to talk about the Green Bay Packers, who just were disgustingly bad against the Bucks. Pretty much everyone failed to show up. Uh, so Rodgers is not going to go down, but will be going down very quickly if he continues to play like that. That was a stinker, to say the least, but he's been so good the rest of the year. Uh, you hope it's just a game and he can turn that thing around. But for these other guys, you've got some pretty more legitimate concerns, I think. So Devontae Adams, he just is not a physical receiver. I, I love Devontae Adams. He's top five receiver in the NFL. He's a top separator in the league. Uh, but one thing about him is when he does get covered up, I don't really trust him. He doesn't hand fight very well. He doesn't come down with tough catches. Well, either that's vertically or you see it on like the slants. They try to throw him on slants in the goal line and he can't play physical and come down with those things. They try to throw him a slant in this game. Uh, he gets hit uh, at the point of the catch and he just isn't able to fight through that stuff like some of these top receivers can. Uh, so he has his flaws as a receiver, his hands and his contested catchability, his ball tracking, none of it's all that good. It's really just his route running and foot speed uh, that make him the player he is. Uh, but some of those weaknesses need to be reflected here. Uh, and then you have Kingsley Kiki. He's been one of the only defenders that wanted to show up over the last, uh, well, certainly in this game, but he, he has been great uh, filling in at defensive tackle when Kenny Clark was out. He outplayed Kenny Clark in this game. He's been a great run defender, uh, stepping up. Looking like a good pick there. Kingsley Kiki, a good athlete out of Texas A&M. And then some other star players falling here. So Adrian Amos has been really bad this year. He's been tackling poorly. He hasn't been an impact in coverage, uh, so he's going to come down. And then the edge players here that were so good last year have been not nowhere to be found. Zadarius has been hit or miss this year, but he has not played at the consistent level. Uh, he was certainly nowhere to be found in this game. And then Preston Smith's really having a down season. I, I think I, I kind of predicted this, that Rashawn Gary over the course of the season would overtake Preston Smith. Gary is still trying to get healthy here, but I do think we see that as the season goes on. Uh, so hopefully there's brighter horizons there and maybe Green Bay could get something for Preston Smith in the offseason like a receiver maybe <laughs> but then for for Tampa Bay tons of movement here so Rob Gronkowski film speaks for itself he's just balling out this week maybe just needed some time to get back into football shape uh, he, he looked like old Rob Gronkowski in this game uh, beautiful touchdown catch the back corner of the end zone in this game making tough contested catches being that reliable target for Brady and they need him to step up now because OJ Howard's out so that's a that's a big deal uh, so Gronk did not think we would see this I didn't think he would he would have a single game like this and we're only in week five and then on the offensive line wow 
What an impressive performance. I mean, Green Bay has one of the top D lines in the league, and they shut him out. Tristan Warps at right tackle. Uh, I've been I've been sleeping on him. He, he's been great this year. He, he needs to come up. Uh, he should have been coming up earlier than this, but he was outstanding. Donovan Smith at left tackle has been having his best season. Didn't think that was going to happen here. Uh, Ollie Marpet is just one of the top guards in football, simply put. Let's let's put some respect on his name. And then even Alex Kappa, potentially benefiting from how good everyone else is. Uh, but he's always been a good run blocker, stepping up as a pass protector here. So he's going to go up one, 68 to a 69. And then Tyler Johnson is going to come up. A receiver that had no business going in the fifth round. He's a smooth route runner. He's not unlike uh, Devontae Adams. He doesn't have high-end speed. He can struggle with some of those catching in traffic scenarios. Watched a lot of him at, at Minnesota, um, but he is going to be a great piece for this Bucks offense now that he is out there and he is healthy. Uh, so, man, the weaponry here for Tom Brady, uh, who was good in this game, by the way, after a stinker the week before against the Bears. Uh, and then on the defensive side of the ball, we're going to have Jamel Dean, was our star of the week. Carlton Davis, the physical counterpart to Jamel Dean, uh, the, the lengthy Carlton Davis. I love how Dean can be your shadow lockdown guy. You know, go deal with Devontae Adams. And then Carlton Davis, you can find a good piece. Like you can you can tell him to go find, um, or, or, you know, tell him, but you, you scheme him up against some of the bigger bodied options out there, and he can match that physicality. Uh, just a long, smart corner, really tough run defender as well. A perfect fit here. And then Jason Pierre-Paul is having a total rejuvenation here with Tampa Bay. I think he's just fired up by the fact that they're good. Uh, and he's reliving his glory days this year. He's actually been one of the top pass rushers in football. And, and he could even continue to climb to being a, you know, a star pass rusher. And he's he's been every bit uh, as good as Shaquille Barrett, if not better this year. So he, he's been outstanding. I, I, maybe the most surprising player on this whole list here is Jason Pierre-Paul who I thought was just done. And they gave him a contract extension this offseason, and he is paying back the favor on that one. All right, so then we have the Rams Niners here. No movement for the Rams. Uh, just no one really played outside of expectations this week, I guess. I mean, uh, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Jared Goff, dangerously close to going down here. Uh, they have not been great over the last few weeks, any of them. So uh, just a note there, but actually no movement for the Rams. This was much more about the Niners here. Uh, so Jimmy Garoppolo going to get that one overall back after we took it away the week before. He, he was Jimmy Garoppolo utilizing that middle of the field. Uh, had a great game this week, executing that game plan, playing with confidence, moving well in the pocket, and uh, firing that ball over the middle of the field as he does so well. Lakin Tomlinson's going to go up. He continues his late career trajectory here, a former first-round pick for the Detroit Lions, has found a great home here for San Francisco. He continues to rise, uh, as he has over the last couple years. Uh, I do have a note on Daniel Brunskill. Played well at right tackle for the Niners, but he has really struggled in pass protection for the Niners. Now this week, he dealt with Aaron Donald, so I'm not going to fault him for that. But uh, that that offensive line, that right guard spot's been a big weakness uh, in pass protection. So uh, Brunskill is on note there. For the defense, Javon Kinlaw is actually going to go down. First round pick that I liked has not been the early impact that I thought they would, that they certainly thought he would be. Uh, I'm not going to write him off quite yet, uh, but has just not been that force that they wanted in the middle. And then Jason Barrett was one of the stories of the week. Uh, he's healthy. He looks like his old self, was just an elite performance this week. Now, he hasn't been quite that good. Uh, he's been solid, don't get me wrong. Uh, we know he can play when he's healthy, uh, and he could he could very quickly rise into the mid 80s very quickly if he continues to play like he's playing. And if that happens, he is going to get, as we say here, the bag, <laughs> um, a high upside corner. Really fun to see him getting out there and uh, being a great cover player. Man, and he has been a big need for that secondary with Richard Sherman out too. All right, Bills Chiefs. Uh, it's going to be all run game going up here for the Chiefs. Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, stepping up in his last game as the full-time feature back here before we get Le'Veon Bell in there. But uh, he, he's going to be a future star. Uh, so he's just going to get some love here before Le'Veon Bell steps in. And then uh, Travis Kelsey, he's going to go up because he is having one of his best run blocking seasons. And, and he's been playing well as a receiver as well, of course. We know he can do that, but, but he's blocking his ass off these last few weeks. 
And then Nick Allegretti steps in at left guard. This is promising. Kalecki Assemble done for the season. So uh, Nick Allegretti steps in. was, was really nice plug-and-play performance at that left guard spot. Uh, I liked him coming out of Illinois, so good to see him stepping up as a starting caliber guard. Uh, and then just some notes in this one. Uh, Tyreek Hill, on note, uh, he has not really been dominant this year. He's had some big plays. Uh, and granted, against the Raiders, he had a big touchdown called back, which, you know, that hurts everything. But uh, I want to see more from Tyreek Hill. Well, we got him, you know, with a lot of respect on his name as one of the best receivers in the game. And uh, we want to see that in this offense a little more. Uh, and then Chris Jones, wow, he, he was dominant in this game. Big reason this defense uh, was as good as they were this week because he was really the only game wrecker out there. Everyone else was just okay. Uh, but uh, he, he could be going up if he continues to dominate like that, even though he's already rated as, as one of the top pass rushers in the entire league. And then for the Bills, a lot of concerning, uh, a lot of concerning stuff here from the offensive line through the front seven of the defense. It's supposed to be a physical, tough team, and they have not been that. The guard play here is becoming a real concern. So they released Quentin Spain this week, who's supposed to be their best guard. That was kind of head-scratching. Brian Winters, they picked him up from the Jets. Uh, I've stand Brian Winters for a while, but it's time. He just hasn't been a good player now for two years. And the Jets moved on from him. That tells you uh, where he's at in his career. Cody Ford just hasn't been able to gain momentum. He, he's had some good games. Was a, a well-respected guard coming out of Oklahoma, but he's really struggling, struggling in pass protection this year. So the interior offensive line, a worry. They haven't been run blocking well either, which was a strength of this team last year. Uh, and then on the defense, Ed Oliver has been weak sauce, really weak sauce. It's been Solomon Thomas type stuff from Ed Oliver, uh, getting bullied in the run game, not contributing as a pass rusher. That was the question with Ed Oliver is where was he going to fall as this undersized, you know, 6'2", 280 pound interior defensive lineman? Where was he going to fall on the Solomon Thomas, Aaron Donald scale? And I'm getting worried. I'm really getting worried about Ed Oliver. He's not developing as a pass rusher. He's not playing physical. They need him, and he's not stepping up. They spent the you know eighth overall pick on him or whatever. Uh, so uh, come on, Ed Oliver. I loved you coming out. I had him as a blue chip prospect, but it's not looking great right now. And then Tremaine Edmonds also going to come down. I know he's battling an injury, but man, he's been bad this year. He has just been bad. Uh, so two of the guys, you know, people have been asking me, why is the Bills defense so bad? Well, for one, you don't have that home crowd, right? The the Bills home crowd has been such an advantage for this defense. Uh, you force opponents to get to the silent count. It helps the pass rush. Uh, so you have that as a starter. I mean, there's only like three or four teams playing defense in the NFL this year. But when you have big expectations for guys like Ed Oliver and Tremaine Edmonds, and they not just that they don't meet them, they go far below what they've done in years past, that's that's a problem. Uh, they they need to play much better for this defense. All right, the final game here, uh, the Cardinals-Cowboys. So Mason Cole at center for the Cardinals, second week in a row. He's going to go up. He's uh, bunkering down there as a pass protector at center where that's a position that they needed it to happen. So you'd love to see that. Josh Jones, by the way, got in there at left tackle for about 10 snaps in this game. Uh, a draft favorite tackle who fell to the third round. I don't know if he'll start, uh, you know, Gilbert and, uh, is it Gilbert? Yeah, Gilbert's playing at right tackle, right? And uh, the, the the DJ Humphreys at left tackle. I don't know if Josh Jones will start at any point. Maybe he could slide in there to guard, maybe at uh, J.R. Sweezy's spot, potentially. Uh, but yeah, he got in there and played well in like 10 snaps. And then Buda, uh, let's stay on the offensive side of the ball until we go to the defense. Uh, Christian Kirk was great in this game. Thought about boosting him up interesting player you know was kind of pigeonholed as a slot guy coming out he's been forced to play outside <laughs> it's kind of weird like Larry is still here eating up those slot reps but I do wonder how much upside Christian Kirk could bring with the the speed and athleticism he has as that slot threat I know he's been pretty good on the outside but you got Hopkins you got Isabella I, I'm not saying bench Larry Fitzgerald it's just kind of an unfortunate series of events there like you, you need to have Larry in there he's a good player but I would also love to see what Christian Kirk could do in his natural spot in the slot you know um, but then for the defense I will say Isaiah Simmons got out there for like 25 snaps and was great uh, we've, we've had him rated nicely he was blue chip prospect coming out it's time he starts playing like it but he was doing a good job in coverage 
hopefully they can start to get him going up to speed, making that position change to linebacker. Uh, would love to see it. Would really love to see it. Uh, you know, DeAndre Campbell at, at linebacker just, you know, he's fallen off. He had a good start, but it, it's time. It's time to get Isaiah Simmons in there. To This this defense has so much upside, especially when you have Buda Baker playing the, well, the way he's playing as that do-it-all safety. Uh, just so fun to watch. So instinctive. Flies to the ball and run defense. Makes plays in coverage. Uh, got a big old bag of money this offseason to a lot of people's surprise, myself included. Uh, but he is he is living up to that billing as currently the highest paid safety in football. And then Byron Murphy, who was my number one corner in the 2019 draft. I had him as a, a top 10 prospect in that class with the elite quickness that he showed this week. He was awesome against CeeDee Lamb. Absolutely astounding coverage against C.D. Lamb this week. Uh, he can run man. He can run zone. He's instinctive. He's tough. He tackles. I am such a big Byron Murphy fan. It was fun to see him have uh, potentially his best game of his career out there um, uh, in, in prime time. So you look at, you got Byron Murphy. You still got Pat Pete there. You got Buda Baker at safety. And then Isaiah Simmons with, with Hicks in there. Like there's so much coverage potential excited to see the secondary go up against um the the seahawks passing game here's a take why not put isaiah simmons on dk metcalf just a take just saying put him out there on dk metcalf see what happens i'm curious i'm very curious if that could work because i don't know who here i mean maybe you put patrick peterson he's a tough player um it's not going to happen. It's just a thought I had. I mean, just the two freak athletes going at it. It'd be fun. Uh, and then uh, Hassan Reddick is having a little renaissance here. Contract season. He was a top pick for the Cardinals. And he is uh, basically going to have to step up because Chandler Jones is done for the season. So Hassan Reddick playing that true pass rushing role. There's no room for him to play linebacker, uh, which, you know, we all love to do in Madden, take that athlete and put him at off-ball linebacker. But but he's best when he's rushing the passer, and he's actually been serviceable. So he's an interesting player. Uh, I don't think he has a super high upside as a pass rusher, but could be their best rusher. So uh, good for Hassan Reddick. Maybe he gets a decent little opportunity for someone else. I would love to see him play for Belichick or something, which would be a great scheme fit. Maybe Detroit or Miami, you know. Then for Dallas, tons of movement here. So... Uh, I'll talk about Dalton. I mean, go go listen to what I said about him on the podcast. He, he did not have a good game. Uh, could definitely go down if he plays more like that. I think he'll be better. I think he got thrown under the rug. I think he has a good game this week. I think they bounce back. Uh, I'll spoil it right now. One of my favorite bets this week is Dallas to beat the Washington team. Uh, but obviously, if he plays like that, he's going to go down. He was not great. It wasn't terrible, though. It wasn't as bad as people made him out to be as like the worst quarterback in the league who was terrible was Zeke, who was our dud of the week, <laughs> was the biggest reason this team lost. Uh, just gave Arizona two touchdowns, basically. When this defense is so bad, you can't cough those balls up on your own side of the field. Um, the offensive line is concerning. Uh, they need to get Lyle Collins back yesterday. I don't know when he's going to be back. Uh, but Connor Williams is playing good uh, at left guard which has been their weakness for over the last few years. Now they have new new weaknesses, but good to see him developing and doing it without Tyron Smith there, without Frederick there. He's doing it on his own. He's holding up in pass protection. Tyler Biedash is, is coming along here uh, as that fourth round pick. I liked him uh, coming out of Wisconsin as a high floor center, and, and he's been that. He It's exactly what he's been. He's, he hasn't been great. Uh, he had a bad game against, I think it was against the Giants, uh, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, he was against the Giants. But uh, other than that, he's been solid as a pass protector. Good, not great. And solid as a run blocker. That's kind of what I expected from him. And then for the defense, Everson Griffin just hasn't been that factor. He's coming down to uh, now the same rating as Alden Smith. Uh, they've kind of worked their way towards each other. Now, Alden Smith, I thought he was going to have a good game this week against DJ Humphreys and uh, Gilbert. And he, he didn't. He, he didn't show up. Uh, it was Concerning week for Alden Smith. Concerning week for Everson Griffin. This pass rush. Uh, uh, da, 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 um, what's his name? Superstar. Defensive end. What's his freaking name? Lawrence. Was not great in this game either. These edge guys just are not playing consistent this year at all. Uh, and uh, Jalen Smith was bad in this game too. So Dallas' defense is just so bad. 
I don't need to explain it. Everyone in the secondary is going down here. Xavier Woods, Daryl Worley, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, Trayvon Diggs. None of these guys rated well necessarily, but they're playing even below expectations here. So they're all going to go down. I think it's just about time for that one. So there are your studs and duds from NFL Week 6. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoy football this weekend. We get Big Ten football back. Lots of good games. It's going to be a great weekend of football. Great time to be alive, man. We're getting over the hump. We're getting over the hump. There's good things to be happy about as human beings. Stay positive, people. It's been a rough year. We're almost through it. Uh, so cheers, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Please do hit that like button. Share the video. All that good stuff. Cheers. We'll see you for the next one. Peace out.